I would be more shocked to see Mike not working than working. You gotta clean up the stash. <laughs> <laughs> We're traveling to Indiana, and there's literally nothing on the road that you see other than cornfields. I'm tired, holy, <laughs> it's been hot. I'm back there filming and doing my job, and then this guy at the top, Jay's like, he yells at me, and he's like, dude, get out of the way. <laughs> Crazy thing literally is farmers around here never trade corn, don't know about it, don't know they can get 20% more yield. I mean, that's going to be a booming business. I'm excited about that. No this is small plan. town America, right? There's yeah. acres and acres and acres of cornfields, basically. We're traveling to Indiana, and there's literally nothing on the road that you see other than cornfields. So we're on the way. We're going out to visit our, our drone crew out in Indiana. These guys have been grinding. I mean, 16 hours a day, seven days a week. So Mike and Jay are out there and uh, we're gonna go bring them some more bubbler, give them some encouragement and then show you guys what it's like to actually grind. Guys, there's an endless opportunity, especially here in the Midwest. We're standing in just on the Western end of Wayne County, Ohio right now. There's farms everywhere you look along Route 30 here, 200 miles this way, probably about hundred miles yeah. that way. Yep. Huge, huge opportunity yeah. here. There's no chemical retailer that's really servicing this area of Ohio. It's just not being done. So we don't wanna to have to go start a chemical retailer, but we will. We're looking for somebody out there that has interest in starting a chemical company. If you wanna start selling a chemical retailer, or if you have a connection here that maybe could benefit farmers in this area, hit us up. We wanna to work together. Um, there's a ton of potential. Well, shall we get the bubbler, jump back in the car, and then uh, we'll see you guys in Indiana. Feels like we've been driving all day. We're gonna need Starbucks. I don't think so. <laughs> we'll go to a generic, nondescript coffee shop and get a cup of coffee. Get some water. We gotta pick up some water for the guys. Working long hours, you need to stay hydrated. 15 minutes away, said the guys are doing some pretty good fields today, so once we get there, expect to see him hard at work, expect to see Mike not even wanna stop to talk. He's just gonna be like, we're hustling, let's keep going. We're gonna show up, we're gonna see them, we're gonna see if they're actually working or not. They say they're working, we're gonna see if they're actually getting it done. I would be more shocked to see Mike not working than working. Viviana, how's it going? Yeah, how do you, we got Jason up on top, prepping uh, for a new site. So let's go see what they're doing. Welcome to Indiana. I'm tired, holy, it's been hot. I'm back there filming and doing my job, and then this guy at the top, Jay's like, yells at me, and he's like, dude, get out of the way. <laughs> the drums are working, like, running good. We gotta get on the first fill up. I mean, this has gotta be like NASCAR pit yeah, crew. Yeah, That's yeah. what we're after. Yeah. So we got a drone coming back right now. He's coming to get battery swapped. He's gonna get refilled with the fungicide. So your ground guys really gotta make sure that their stay in safe operating procedures are all intact. Efficiency happens on the ground, not when the drones are in the air. You'll see how well the application that gets done out of the T40 drones. It's amazing what these machines are doing. It's the future. This was about a 50 acre, roughly 50 acre job. We were here about 30 minutes that we were working and it was a job well done. Strap them down just to make sure that nothing's moving around while we're going from job to job. Arms fold in, remove the battery. It's only uh, 645, the night is still young. So we'll be to a few more spots here tonight yet. Let's go! Let's go! Get after it, boys! Let's go, Jason! We knocked out about 50 acres there, not a lot of time. From setup to teardown, I think it was right at 
40 minutes. Got rehydrated a little bit, had some watermelon. When you're running and gunning all day spraying, you gotta stay hydrated. Best way to do that is with some watermelon. I could eat all your watermelon. 656 right now, still got a solid two, two and a half hours of spraying left to go. How's it going folks? I'm gonna show you guys how to run a efficient drone spraying operation. Like, people think that these drones aren't capable of doing large acreage, I'm here to prove you wrong. We've done probably over 500 today with one team. With all the teams, we probably push in two to 3,000 right now. We're gonna show you how we do it, in and out. You know, you can't have those drones sitting on the ground for too long, they gotta stay in the air to really make acres. No doubt about it, if you want to be a successful drone spraying operation, you're going to work some long hours. Up early in the morning, work all day, get done when it's dark, basically. That's what we've been doing. It's a short season, so if you can push through, it can be profitable. Oh, drones are acting up. The tower is really sticky. You gotta wash them out all the time. That was a good one. 300 acres in three minutes. <laughs> this is a good day of spraying. I'm telling you guys, this is the future. But here's the deal that, you know, back in the day when you had to shovel all your fields to, you know, plow them, then a horse drawn plow came along. That was like the best thing. And then a tractor came along. That was the best thing. Things progressed. What I'm trying to say is, Helicopters, airplanes, that was the best at that time. So we're wrapping up a beautiful day out here in Southern Indiana. It was beautiful sunset. Mike and the guys, they killed it today, ready for tomorrow. So it's about 5.05, .05, just after five. Alarm clocks went off a couple minutes before five. We're about 15 minutes out from where the guys are. Mike and the crew are staying, so we're gonna head over there. This is what it's like. Got out of the field kind of early last night at around 9.30. Showered up, in bed by 10, up by 5. We're ready to do it all again today. Well, this morning we're uh, cleaning out all the drones because last night it was super late and I didn't feel like doing this. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. This is better than the shop. But now it's morning and we should probably be headed to the field and we're not doing that. So we're uh, cleaning out the drones, making sure they uh, run properly. We're spraying some sugar water out of here. Super sticky stuff. Yeah, not really good for the drones, but they still do it. This takes longer to clean it out where we're at on that. All right, we are uh, on the road this morning. It was a little rough. We had to clean out the drones because this uh, sugar water we were spraying yesterday just kind of clogged up the system got those things cleaned out and we're on the road right now we should be able to do quite a bit of acres today we got about 800 right on uh you know one square mile basically a little bit over that but should be a good day we'll see hopefully everything runs smoothly and we can knock this out headed to the gas station first and then we're gonna get uh everything fueled up we gotta get gas in the generators we gotta put gas in jugs we gotta get diesel everything gets topped off in the morning Yeah, and, and you're saying that the, basically back in the day, you just sprayed your good fields, uh, but now you're you're basically, you're spraying it all because you're seeing that much of an increase. Yeah, we used to not spray at all. It, it's cool. Um, would you say that the drones being able to get into these smaller fields is something that wasn't d able to be done back in the day with airplanes and helicopters? To be able to get in there, yeah, I would think, but I, we don't have any experience with drones. This yeah. is the first year. 
Yeah. Basically, he's like, yeah, you got to spray. I mean, they they literally seen a hundred bushel an acre increase by spraying. They had uh, southern rust come in on their corn and it basically killed the stock. There's, there's stuff out there that will keep the health of your corn high and they are seeing it increase their yield big time. So you'll see behind me, actually this is downtime. The guys have uh, too much sludge in the bottom of the tanks. Come in here, emptying it out. It's only been like 15, 20 minutes, but that downtime during daylight hours is precious. So, uh, so far the day not off to a good start. Basically, this is the company that we're working for. So they take care of all the chemical stuff. They will meet us out in the field to fill us up. But since we had some issues with the sludge in the bottom of the tanks, we had to come here to the farmer, clean it out. And then uh, he's dumping a bunch of more chemical back in our tanks and we'll be back on the road. So they meet us out there and do this. It saves us a lot of time. Okay, now we can maybe get on a roll. Maybe, hopefully. So here at Drone Deer Recovery, we're convinced ag spraying with drones is the way of the future. If you have interest in anything, you have questions, you want to know how to do it, you want to know what to buy, you want to know uh, what e-bike we use. If you want to know anything, if we can be of any help, reach out to us, especially next spring. I think we'll be setting up a ton of people with their own ag spraying operations around the US. We'd love to get you started. If you have interest, DM us, send us an email, let us know, we'll be there.